Uh, Jumbo Joe, the ageless wonder that has kept us entertained for the two plus decades thus far that he's been in the league. The charismatic forward, who has the knack for making the best passes, has also, throughout his lengthy career, wrecked up his fair share of jerk moments. In this video, we're going to go over some jerk moments from the longtime shark that made the jerk category. And with that, here are the top seven jerk moments from Jumbo Joe Thornton. was partially motivated to add this one for the sheer humor factor as well. Um, this sequence, in my opinion, is just straight up comical, really. Before San Jose reached Vancouver in the 2011 Western Conference Finals, they first had to go through the Detroit Red Wings, and the Sharks captain was sure to bring his best theatrics to the game. Towards the end of the first period, after getting a shove from Johan Franzen on open ice during a board battle, Thornton decided to spice things up with Franzen, who we know now was already dealing with Mike Babcock's backlash as well. So. Franzen, after getting a stick between the legs and a corkscrew-like motion from number 19, uh, that caused him to fall to the ice. He decided he wasn't going to tolerate it and retaliated. But to top it all off, and this is where it gets pretty funny, Thornton decided that he was going to come back and troll his opponent that much more by taking a deliberate dive and falling to the ice. After lying on the ice for a hot minute and getting mauled by Franzen a little, Thornton was then sent to the penalty box for embellishment. Quite the sequence of events right there if you ask me. Really, if you thought any of these moments could rival the hilarity of the last, well, think again. As a lone turn of events, to feature Joe Thornton in a Leafs jersey on this list took place in Manitoba. And after a pair of testy periods before, well, things didn't die down one bit. In fact, it was Thornton who decided to instigate just a little bit by breaking his stick on Nikolai Ehlers. Not condoning his actions, but man, it is about to get even more hilarious. After breaking one stick, well, Thornton obviously decides he needs another one, but instead of, you know, deciding to go join the play afterwards, he grabs a new twig and makes his way directly back to Ehlers. Maybe he was playing the game, how many sticks can I break on one guy in a game game? Just a thought. Thornton has a habit of putting his stick where it doesn't belong on TV cameras and screens, and it's not the hockey stick that you see that I'm talking about. And obviously, putting it between his opponent's legs as well. I know that sounded kind of wrong, but bear with me. During a regular season game against the Blues, Thornton decided to do a little jewel hunting. And no, I am not talking about the Indiana Jones type, as during midway through the second period, after feeling a couple whacks courtesy of Paul Stasny, Thornton decided to retaliate by spearing Stasny where it hurts the most. In result of his actions, Thornton was given a game misconduct and sent to the locker room, but not before he asked Stasny if he thought he could still reproduce after. No, just kidding. As his team was down in the remaining seconds of the final frame, it quickly became clear that the Vancouver Canucks had gotten in Thornton's head by that point, as he could be shown mixing it up with Brandon Sutter as they exchanged slashes, followed him a bit making sure to chirp the forward, and then decided to go as fast as he could out of his way to make a run at number 20. So correction, the Canucks didn't get into Thornton's head, as it really just seemed to be Brandon Flat Stanley Sutter's doing all along. Play Stan. Let's go Stan. Flat Stanley himself. Speaking of living in someone's head, well, it was pretty much role reversal in this scenario that took place in Raleigh, as Thornton decided that he was going to try and instigate a little in the crease as he decided to give Kane's goaltender Peter Mrazek a subtle jab with his stick post-whistle. This of course incensed the netminder who immediately reacted by taking a swing at the forward with his paddle. As Mrazek approached Thornton, he decided to give him an idea of what his glove tasted like by punching him in what would be his mouth without his cage as protection. Now obviously, number 34 did embellish on this, but it was something that not only his opponents, but also his teammates wouldn't let him forget, as they decided to make light of the incident by getting artistic prior to practice with this masterpiece. All right, now we're really getting into the more serious territory with these final two incidents. As during the final minutes of the middle frame of play in Sin City, of the 2019 Stanley Cup playoffs, Thornton decided it was a good idea to skate into Thomas Nosek and drive his shoulder into his head. Obviously, this wasn't embellished as Nosek, after receiving some brutal head contact, fell to the ice on impact. 
Thornton, who was allowed to remain in the game, was only dealt a two-minute minor penalty. But despite this, NHL player safety thought the hit deserved much more than just a two-minute stay in the sin bin, as they decided to issue Thornton a one-game suspension for what they saw as an illegal check to the head. While player safety saw this as suspension-worthy, though, Thornton had his differing opinions, while saying, I thought I barely touched him. I think my son hits me like that six times a day. It was just a weird position to put himself in. That's all, he says. A similar like shoulder-to-head play took place in St. Louis during the regular season of 2010. As Thornton was exiting the penalty box, he decided he obviously thought it was quite comfortable in there because he decided to clip David Perron in the neutral zone in brutal fashion. As Perron could be shown immediately becoming incapacitated after taking a high hit that his opponent decided he needed. As Perron could be shown lying motionless on the ice as the play moved into the shark zone. Thornton, who was given a major penalty in-game, was also dealt supplemental discipline in the form of a two-game suspension as well. As for Perron, well, let's just say he got the shorter end of the stick, as he, after playing only 10 games in the 2010-2011 season, was sidelined with a concussion for the rest of the entire campaign. Perron, years later in 2019, recalls how much the hit itself has affected his life years later, while saying, I think about it all the time because I think it's affected my life a lot. I really do think that, he says.